Hey guys, Greg here, and let's solve three sum. So we're given an integer array of nums, and we need to return all the triplets, nums at i, nums at j, and nums at k, such that i is not j, i is not k, and j is not k. So basically, they're all three different positions, and we also must have that the three numbers of the array, they are all going to sum to zero. Now, notice that the solution set must not contain duplicate triplets. Now, we need to look at the input really closely here. So firstly, notice that there are duplicates allowed, okay? There is negative one twice in the array that will have implications. However, the solution set must not contain duplicate triplets. Negative 101 is a solution here. We have negative 101 right here, but we also have this negative 1 and 0 and 1. So even though we can make it in multiple ways, it's still the three numbers of negative 1, 0, and 1. The order doesn't matter. It's the same numbers here, and so you only want to include that solution once in the output. And our other sum that goes to zero is negative one, negative one, and two. Now notice that we are never using the same indices. Okay, so you must have the three indices are all different from each other. So this negative one and this negative one and two, that's only allowed because we have two negative ones in the array. If we didn't have this duplicate here, you couldn't use this negative one and this negative one again with this two. So you must have the indices are different from each other. All the values must sum to zero and the solution set cannot contain any duplicate triplets. It's actually a pretty tricky question. So the brute force way to look at all possible triples is with three indices i, j, and k. So we could look at here's negative one, zero, one. Then we could do negative one, zero, two, negative one, zero, negative one. And so we slide k across. Once we get through those, we would then bump j up. And so he'd be there. We'd go here and then k could go through these. j would go over again. We could go through these. And then once we got through all of those, you could also then move i over. So we'd have i there and then j j and then k with basically three nested while loops one for i one for j and one for k you could definitely look at all possible triples although that's going to lead to an o of n cubed solution and so we're not really going to cover that so we're going to do the same strategy as two sum here where we'll get a hash map of all of the numbers and their indices so we'd make the key be the number and the value is going to be the index negative one and zero zero and one one and two two and and three. Now when we hit negative one again, that's actually going to just override what we had. And then for negative four, we will have the index of five. Okay, so now we have a hash map that's going to allow us to look these up in constant time. So now we're going to go through all pairs of numbers. So we'll use i and j together. Now we'll go through for i and j, and that's going to be a loop. Basically, i is going to be in the range of n, and j is going to be the range of i plus one to n. So that's going to use all possible pairs. Well, what are we looking for it. Well, we want three numbers. Well, we have a number here. We have another number here. So those are our two indices. And then we can use our hash map to ask any other number. Okay, so what's our sum currently? Well, our sum with i is negative one, and then our sum with j is zero. So our current sum is negative one. Well, what are we looking for? We want three numbers that sum to zero. Okay, well, how do we make that? Well, we need another number that's going to counteract this. And so if this is negative one, we actually need another number positive one. So do we have that number in the array? Do we have a positive one? Well, we can look that up in constant time. And yes, actually we do. And we know its index is corresponding to two. So we have three numbers, negative one, zero, and positive one that are going to sum to zero. Now we need to ask another question. Are we reusing any indices? Well, we know i and j aren't. We're not going to set up the for loop so that they're ever equal to each other. So we're not worried if i is equal to j. We are worried, however, if i is the same index of the hash map or if j is the same index of the hash map. We stored the index in the hash map so we can make sure we're not using the same number. So if we called this index, say k, we just want to make sure that i is not equal to k and j is not equal to k. And if that's true, then we have three different numbers in the array that sum up to zero. Now, at some point, we'd also find negative one, two, and negative one. So I'll just pretend that we found that already, negative one, two, and negative one. But something actually more interesting than that comes up. Now, something that comes up is actually another duplicate issue. We have negative one and zero here. And notice that when we have these, we immediately ask the hash map if we can find one. Okay, so we do find that and that's why we put it in right here. Then when we go over here, we actually run into another issue. We have negative one and one that makes it zero. That means we're looking for another number of zero. Do we have that? Well, yes, we actually do. It's right there. 
there, and the hash map will tell us as well. If we were just to immediately put this into our list, we would end up with, you know, in some order, negative one, zero, and one. But that is a duplicate, okay? We've already had that before, and we don't want that. We already said that we don't want these duplicates. So an easy way to keep track of duplicates is just to make this a set of stuff, okay? So now I'm calling it a set, but sets can't take lists. Lists are mutable, aka they are not hashable. What is hashable and immutable is a tuple, okay? So if we make all of these tuples, then we could detect for duplicates. However, what's even still irritating about this is say we weren't worried about the order here. We put in, you know, the tuple of negative one, zero, and one. That is actually a different tuple than one, zero, negative one, okay? They're the same tuples of numbers, except we don't want both of them in the output solution. We only want one of them. So what we actually do is when we put stuff into this return set here, we make them sorted tuples. So there's only one sorting of the same number. So if we put this, this actually already is sorted sorted. This one is not sorted. So we would actually have made this negative one, negative one, and two. Therefore, if we ever came across the numbers of say two, negative one, and negative one, we would immediately sort them so that they look like this and our set will take care of the duplicates. This is going to yield a big O of n squared runtime because we are using all possible pairs of numbers. We're going through with i and j for all the pairs and all of the set stuff and the hash map stuff, that's all going to be constant. So we don't really worry about those. O of n squared is gonna be the runtime. Okay, so let's code this up. We'll start with our hash map, which I'm just gonna call H. That is gonna be starting as an empty dictionary. And remember its keys are going to be the numbers and the values are going to be the index of that number. So we'll get N is the length of the numbers and we're going to make S be our return set. And so this is going to be the thing that we return. And we actually want just an iteratable of all of our triples. And the thing we described where it's just a set of those tuples, that is actually fine to return. So let's start by building up our hash map, we'll go for i and num and enumerate the nums. So we get the index and the number and we set the h at num equal to i. So the hash map's key is going to be the number and the value is going to be the index. Then we'll go for i in the range of n. So we'll go through all the numbers again and we'll say for j in the range of i plus one to n, that's the way to loop over all possible pairs. If you did want all possible triples, you could definitely do it with for k in the range of j plus one to n, but we're not gonna do that, that's O of n cubed. So let's do a little math here. If we're looking for a target of zero and we're wanting that from nums at i plus nums at j plus nums at basically just another index that's stored in the hash map, I'm gonna call this desired. It's the number we're looking for. Let's rearrange this. And so really these become negative and go to the other side. So this is going to be negative nums at i minus nums at j is equal to the desired. So we want a desired number, which is equal to these. In fact, if we flip around it like this, we set desired equal to the negative nums at i minus nums at j that immediately sets this variable equal to the number we're looking for. Okay, so we need to see if we have that number. If desired is actually in our hash map, remember the numbers are in the keys. So if desired is in H and the H at the desired is not equal to I, and we need to make sure that H at desired is not equal to J. So we're not using the same position. It's a different index and it's the number that we're looking for. If that's true, then we found three numbers. However, we still need to worry about the duplicates. So we S dot add, we need to make sure it's in a Set, and we're going to add the tuple of the sorted version of the three numbers, which are nums at i, nums at j, and the desired number. So through a quadratic algorithm, we get the number we're looking for if the number is actually there and it's not going to use the same index we're already using. We make sure that we don't have any duplicates by throwing it in the sorted tuple of the numbers. We can just end up returning this thing right here. It's an iteratable of those triples and so that is going to work. The time complexity of this algorithm is big O of n squared and that's the best you could possibly do. We basically removed a dimension by utilizing the hash map and so the the space complexity is going to be big O of n because we're just storing all the stuff in a hash map and so that's linear. Pretty tricky problem guys and there's actually another interesting way to solve it where you sort the numbers first you're still not going to beat O of n squared uh, but I hope this was helpful guys drop a like if it was and have a great day bye bye.